but let's talk about something the opposite of an argument. A deal has been reached. The firefighters' strike is off. Jake, tell us a bit more. You wrote the story. Oh, huh? why? I don't have to do all the work. I'm saying, yes, all right. You're technically right. I did write the story. God, you're going to have to work harder next week. What have you done? What have you done all the bloody work here? Right, so we've been talking about the... Um, um, the uh, firefighter strike, which is one of two potential strikes um, involving air services, which is kind of the body that oversees um, air traffic control and also oversees um, aviation firefighters. And the kind of the ongoing um, argument here is that this wasn't necessarily um, about money. This was, in fact, about that what they would accuse um, understaffing, and they said this understaffing um, would lead, would you know, lead to them becoming tired, which would therefore make things more dangerous for passengers. Um, it didn't look like we would get anywhere closer to a breakthrough because we had this. I don't use that word again. Beautiful word, kerfuffle. We had this kerfuffle. Oh, not a stoush. A sta oh, That's a very oh, sorry. A stoush. A I love stoush. that. You know, I'd never heard the word stoush when I was in the UK. If someone said, "Oh, they had a stoush," I'd be like, "What are you on about?" That is such an Australian word. So is rot. I'm. I'm surprised. Yes. That, I'm surprised that nowhere else in the world has the word. It's rort. ridiculous. It's rort. such a good word. It is a good word. It is a good word because it's such an Australian word. It means someone's on the take. There's a scam, a backhand well, that's going it's on. Not, it's not even that there's a scam. It's that, like someone's taking unfair advantage. Yeah, and that's, um, which yeah. may be perfectly it may be perfectly legal, but it's 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 you know against the spirit of the thing. Oh, it's the spirit of Australia because all about fair go, exactly. you know, fair exactly. dinkum, fair everything, and there can be nothing worse than not being fair to an Australian. Australian mates. Um, I do love Australia, by the way, if anyone from immigration is listening. Um, so, you know, it's, it's OK. You, you are white and British. That You're fine. You can say basically anything. They're processing the permanent residency at the moment. I'm on a, <laughs> this is on ice now. I mean, this is the... No, I can't. Anyway, that was about three tangents. Let's go back. Anyway. From, from the rot back to the stoush. To the stoush. Back to the argument between air services and aviation firefighters. Um, and basically, uh, there was all of this kerfuffle about these apparent leaked documents that showed how at risk um, travellers were. And air services basically came back and said these documents weren't in any way leaked and they never showed that. This was a kind of a worst case scenario planning document. It wasn't in any way a, a description of what was going on. Anyway, there was a lot of bad blood, a lot of rows. So it looked like this was going to be, we're going to be a long way away from a conclusion. And then on Thursday evening, I believe, just after we sent our newsletter, um, we got confirmation from both air services and and aviation firefighters, but they have in fact reached an in principle agreement and they called off their strike that was going to happen on Monday. And um, now, essentially, the way these things work is the union agrees a deal um, with the bosses um, and then this deal is put to a vote um, by members. But you know, almost certainly, this is going to be approved. Um, one of the extraordinary, well, not extraordinary, but one of the uh, intriguing things about this is we don't actually really know much of the details about this at all. We know that they've reached a deal. Um, Air services basically say this satisfies all their concerns over understaffing, but we don't know exactly what this deal is, um, how much more money they're going to get, um, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, it's um, it, the, the details have sort of been kept under wraps um, because air services um, was, was basically implying that all of this... Um, all of this uh, uh, talk of safety from the the firefighters union, they were sort of. It seemed that they were implying that this was all a fig leaf to um, to to cover up the firefighters' actual aim, which was a, a twenty percent pay rise, which air services could not provide. Um, so it will be interesting to see if and when the details of the deal come out to find out, you know, what the firefighters have actually got. Um, and you know what what air services uh, what ground air services has been prepared to seed um, on the subject of air services just a quick note um, there was a lot of uh, kerfuffle as we say Adam last year about uh, air services performance um, well, uh, uh, sort of quietly, you know, throughout the first few months of this year, uh, air services, air traffic and performance has been getting a fair bit better since the um, since since the travails of last year. Uh, in March 2024, um, ground delays and cancellations that were attributable to air services hit a 12 month low, just 4 percent of ground delays, 1 percent of cancellations and its capacity constraints affected only 1.3 percent of flights for the month. Um, so air services uh, is getting 
quite a lot bit quite a lot better in the provision of air traffic control services so its network reports would suggest um, and this basically comes um, after a lot of backlash from um, airlines and from various other people in the industry um, that when I think in 2022 and sort of the start in 2023 well we had a lot of delays and cancellations we still do but um, we had a lot of trouble with reliability and the airlines were effectively blaming air services and said you know a significant amount of this was due to them not having enough air traffic controllers which meant that airspace have to be closed if airspace has to be closed this can sometimes lead to um to delays and they effectively said that air services lost too many people during covid or too many people took early, early retirement and they didn't get enough people in to replace them and air services said that's not quite fair um because we actually do have enough air traffic controllers, but it often depends on, you know, different types of job descriptions, you know, different rosters, etc. Um, and that they, they argue they always had enough people um, to meet the kind of minimum requirements. But nonetheless, it does seem that the new people that are coming in, and it takes a long time to train people up and qualify them and etc. It does, it does seem that things are getting better and that post-COVID performance is, is starting to improve. Yeah, air service is still staring down a potential strike action from air traffic controllers um, who who are saying that uh, who are saying that, that there's there's still understaffing issues and and there's toxic work culture. Um, so we are keeping an eye on 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 that situation and we are going to see what what civil air uh, members end up doing. Um, but in the air traffic control world, uh, there's there's been more bright spots lately. So um, well done to uh, the the hardworking people at air service. 